to One Sustainability, our uh, 2023 Global Sustainability Conference here on the One Business World platform. Today, we stand at the intersection of commerce and impact, gathering here this week as we navigate the pressing challenges of our era. This conference is more than just a dialogue, it's a clarion call for action. Your market insight just doesn't meet, but propels environmental foresight. Together, we have the power and the responsibility to shape the next chapter of sustainability. Our next, our next guest speaker, and we're very uh, uh, happy to welcome uh, Stefan Gerch. He is the founder and CEO of Gerch Consulting and Mode Vision. He's joining us today from Switzerland uh, his afternoon, and his topic is revolutionizing fashion, crafting tomorrow's business models. Stefan, good, good afternoon. Welcome. Let me hand it off over to you. We look forward to your talk. Thank you very much for your introduction, Glenn. And uh, a very warm welcome also from my side, from Switzerland, to my presentation about the new business models for the fashion industries. My name, my name is Stefan Gerch. I'm owner of the Gerch Consulting and Modivision, which I founded in 1997 in Sofingen, located in Switzerland. I have been working for years on the digitalization of processes under the aspect of Industry 4.0 for the fashion industry. Already in 1997, I had the idea of a city factory, which we know today as a fast factory concept from Adidas. But in 1997, no one's believe in such concepts. That was the reason that I founded the Gerch Consulting and Modivision. In this activity, I have spent the last 12 years building together with my teams in Sofingen and in Vietnam, the digital platform POD Pattern on Demand, which allows companies to approach new business models in the fashion industry. Since I have a solid education in the apparel industry, as well in the IT, I can offer my work and the associated consulting and products in an interdisciplinary, direct, and solution oriented way. But now let us enter into the topic. I think you have also seen such pictures in the newspapers or on the social media. Mountains of discarded clothing in the deserts of South America or in Africa, partially used, but often still new. Robert from Lensing has also shown in his previous presentation some facts and figures and thoughts about the waste of garments already. What are the causes of such images and situations? Production to the floor. That means every shop must be filled worldwide with an assortment of sizes, lengths and color. Production based on estimated and assumption months before the sale will go ahead. Missing of digital platforms to automate processes and enable new shopping experience for customers. High supply chain complexity and a lack of transparency. I will just like to briefly mention a few facts and figures, but they are very impressive. The textile industry is the second largest emitter of carbon emissions in the world with 2.1 billion of tons after the heavy oil industry. In addition, the textile industry is also responsible for a very high water consumption. As a result of incorrect demand forecasts, we have worldwide an overproduction of 10%, which are neither listed in retail nor online, but directly destroyed again. The e-commerce industry has to contend with high returns rates, which in Germany alone account for a loss of 5.4 billion euro. At the moment, we have for the next six years enough clothes on the world, so there would be no need to produce garments at the moment. Let's do one time a little calculation. 
If we wanted to offer a men's polo shirt in 10 different colors with four color variants and in a size range from XS to XXL, it results in 280 different combinations. First, that takes up a lot of materials, resources, and spaces in the stores. And second, if you are unlucky, your choice is already sold out if you go to the store. For this reason, enormous logistical efforts are made to link warehouses together to deliver missing items to you from another branch. This again at the expense of the environment. Based on this background, Daniel Greeder, CEO of Hugo Boss AG, said at the St. Gallen Symposium of the University of St. Gallen in Switzerland, which this year was focused on sustainability. The basic problem is that the fashion industry massively overproduce. 70% of the textile produced are never worn. More sustainable textiles and new business models are needed. But what are these business models? The new business models are fashion on demand, mass customization, and production on demand. The characteristic of all these three models is that the trigger of a production is the consumer who placed an order. Production is therefore demand driven and not based on estimations. However, the way in which the order passed through the production can be different. On the one hand, orders, especially in the mass customization are collected over a certain period of time and then processed, for example, in a daily run. On the other hand, especially in smaller companies, orders are also processed individually immediately after the order is coming in and handed over to the production. Today, when we look at process and supply change, as well as flow of goods, we have to do so from a circular economy perspective. It can no longer go that we do not consider the whole life cycle of a garment. In relation to the apparel and fashion industry, this could be, for example, the following areas. Spinning, then waving to receive the fabric, sewing, and to this group, I count also the design, the production and sale, then repair or second hand or upcycling and at least recycling of the garments. A strong supply chain partnership with a high degree of transparency plays an important and central role here. You cannot solve the problem as an individual or a company alone, but you can take on an important partial aspect in the community. For example, in spinning, great efforts and developments are being made to spin short staple cotton from recycled cotton together with new cotton into good quality yarns. This was also shown at the last ITMA in Milan, Italy this year. In my following reflections, I would like to focus on the sewing segment which includes the design, creation of a garment up to its production and same. Because for this area, we have ideas and solutions in our portfolio to handle the mentioned business models. Therefore, the question we need to ask ourselves is how fashion can be designed or configured, produced and consumed in the future because the approach should be that shop shopping is still fun, but definitely away from the fast fashion to a more durable clothing 
which is also worn longer. We have so many quality, very quality yarns, fabrics and accessories that it is a waste to wear them only a few times. Unfortunately, it is a fact that a lot of clothing is bought but never worn. This can have several reasons. Shopping as a pastime. Customer had to make a compromise when buying, which he later regrets and thus does not wear the garments. Another important aspect of the transition is also the creation of a new appreciation for work and products. Mass customization is a key objective of Industry 4.0. Therefore, let's look a little bit closer at the definition and mention the different types. Mass customization refers to the linking of mass production with individual products manufactured according to the customer's needs. Several advantages such as scaling are retained. First of all, we have the self-customization. This concept is mainly found in online stores. In this case, a special configurator is needed which can also provide coherent feedback through a visualization. 3D visualizations are common today. So the end consumer can see what he design. This configurator guides the customer through the design process. And that is why we also speak of a co-designer. The configurator informs the customer about the possibilities and also prevent non-producible combinations. However, the customer must perform the measurement process her or himself, but more about this a little bit later. Second, we have a point of delivery customization. This is actually very similar to the first, but takes place at the point of sale with appropriate advice from a salesperson. For this reason, these are B2B solutions. The advantages of these solutions are clear. The customer can feel the haptic of the fabric and possible also try a sample piece. In addition, the measuring process is taken over or carried out by the salespersons. Private labeling, also plays a very important role in these concepts. Besides this very sophisticated concept, there are two similar and simpler ones. Modularization. In this case, the customer can choose from a certain range of jackets, blouses, shirts, pants, skirts, and so on, and put together a combination individually. In this case, the individual parts are matched in color and style. This means, however, that the goods are already available again, pre-produced in the shop. And the last one is the time based. So let me jump back. It's the time based management. This is also known as a concept of print on demand. Here, prefabricated items such as pillows, drinking cups, or even textiles such as t-shirts, hoodies, or similar are printed, either with a template from a library or with, you, with your own images or pictures. There are also already offers here from home textiles such as printed wallpapers. But even here, the products are already pre-produced and kept in stock, so that can be quickly printed and delivered. Let us talk a little bit about 
it's a configurator for fashion. The first question what the company is to answer is to what extent they want or need to involve its consumer in the design or configuration process in the future. This may include the following element, fabrics or designs, colors or contrast information, variation or functionalities, it depends to the item. So normal for shirts, we have variations. For outdoor jackets, we speak about functions. Then also accessories like buttons or zippers. And of course, embroideries like initials and prints. What is shown here is the current state of the art. We can expect a lot more in the near future, future in terms of virtual reality and artificial intelligence. I have sales, some ideas to make the customer experience with artificial intelligence even more attractive and the design process even easier. A very important aspect of a configurator is the question on which size or measurement the item is produced. Because once I buy an item for myself and I configure it individually, it makes sense to make it by my body measurement. Here we have different possibilities. Only a simple size selection. So customer can look to a size table and decide to which size he match and order only a fixed size. Second, a size selection with the possibility of adjustment of the item regarding length, like for example, the sleeve length. So he can choose a normal size and adapt the sleeve size and the jacket length. Third, a size selection with the possibility to change the body measurement itself or on measure of the customer based on the body measurement or based on existing item which fits to the customer. An additional special possibility is also selecting the right size over a calculation of the body shape of the customer once a company works with body shapes during the pattern development. Therefore, it is necessary to be able to integrate third party systems for determining the size and or body measurements to a configurator. There are different solutions on the market already, which works with a smartphone or with a solution which is located in a store. We offer our customers such a configurator as a plugin for WordPress and WooCommerce webshops. It is planned to create another plugin for Shopify next year. But the most important and central point in mass customization is a fast and reliable processing of B2C and or B2B orders into corresponding markers for the cutting room, overview lists and production orders for the production. Allocations from different shops to regional production sites, as well as individual adaptation of the patterns to the production method should also be guaranteed. Furthermore, bill of material lists, order tracking, and integration to ARP system should also be possible. These are central functions of our platform to generate the patterns and markers according to the choice of the customer and the body measurements, as well as the properties of the fabric, we control and use the CAD software graphics. The CAD software graphics was especially designed for the use in the made to measure area. But another big challenge for customized apparel production 
are mainly to be found in the manufacturing. This should not be disregarded under any circumstances as they essentially determine the success or fail of such new business models. For example, manufacturers must add new single layer cutters to the production to be able to cut every single orders individually. These new cutters are able to cut long cutting layer patterns continuously. Depending to the product, manufacturers may need to change work groups or workflows. This goes so far that even the individual workplace must be redesigned. I saw one time one company, they have redesigned every workplace in this manner that they lift up the work table from the sitting position to the standing position. They have invested a lot of time and money in every workplace, though they have had the benefit of a very flexible working groups because the change from one workplace to another workplace was even much more faster as before in the sitting position. Then we have to do redesign of processes, material transport and storage, as well workflow and billing system. And at last, reorganization of the supply chain. I won't mention here also the blockchain technology to issue product passports, a topic that plays an important role from the point of view of circular economy in the future. In summary, it can be said that with the combination of personalization, sustainability, supply chain optimization, and technological advancement, new business models are able to build a more efficient and customer-oriented fashion industry. Let me talk about some benefits for these new business models. Minimize returns. So once the goods are done by the body measurements, we do not receive so many returns. Eliminate overproduction, there be conserving resources because we only produce on demand. Create supply chain transparency and reduces transports. No or fewer discount sales need to be given. You know, every time, end of the season, big sales uh, is needed to let go out the rest of the garments, otherwise they will waste. Customer journey, brand profiling and brand association, because customer gets exactly what they want. Better fit due to the production according to measure. Larger binding to the item from the consumer to the item and thus longer wearing times. And of course, prepayment by the customer instead of pre-investment in large inventories of the manufacturer. And there are other advantages for each party of uh, of which uh, we have here, manufacturer, consumer, providers, and so on. Of course, switching from one business model to another doesn't happen overnight, especially for established companies. Startups have much easier time of it. Nevertheless, both have to define and systematically develop their performance and value proportions. Appropriate business model canvases are helpful here. Our short excursion into the world of fashion has shown very well that it's high time to rethink the current business models 
and to develop new approaches to how we create, produce and consume fashion. The so responsibility does not lie only with the producers or only with the customers, but it is the responsibility of all of us so that we can hand over an intact world for those who come after us. At this time, we have access to a lot of technologies and it is important that we use these opportunities to promote sustainability, innovation, efficiency and collaboration across the value chain, paving the way for a more sustainable and prosperous future. And we should already be moving in a direction of Industry 5.0, where people are once again increasingly taking center stage in order to ensure more flexible and cooperative production. Thank you very much for your attention. Stefan, thank you very much. Wonderful, uh, wonderful presentation, wonderful talk. Uh, a lot, lot to think about, a lot to think about. A lot of stuff as a, as a plain, plain ordinary consumer, a lot, a lot for me to even think about some of the uh, consequences of what uh, what happens when you when you when you when you go to the store. So, two hundred and eighty combinations of a given shirt, and as you said, they never have the one I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like, well, there, no sale on no sale on that on that front for sure. You know, fascinating though, 70% of the tech, this, I'm gonna make sure I got the right stats, 70% of the textiles produced are never worn. That That's remarkable. That's really yeah. remarkable. When you, you think about overproduction or you think about um, even, you know, you think about your own like thing, gifts you get, right? And all of a sudden it's like, ah, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't fit perfect. So yeah, it's in my closet, but I never I never use it, right? I wind up not, not only does it take up space, but then I'm I'm not, I'm not I'm not putting it I'm not putting it to, to good use. It really is a life cycle though, for sure. You know, when you think about just the, the circular, circular nature of, of how how all of this all of this plays out. From an from an innovation standpoint, when when through through your work, how how receptive uh do you find, say, the uh the production, the production houses or even the designers on some of the ideas you've been talking about today? Yeah, the, the companies are thinking more and more about these stuffs, and um, that is why we have also many asking for this solution, because they saw that um, it goes no not in this way much more longer. And of course, the great stuff is for the most of the companies, existing companies, they uh, they have actually another business models that is not working in this way and it's very hard to to change now and i have had one time uh, one ceo in germany who said okay mr gage i want to go outside here over the street in another office and start from scratch with your new solution because with my backpack it's not possible to change now in in two few months so that is the reason why big companies has to do a, a great job at the moment. And that's starting in the, in the design process, development, product development, as well than pattern making uh, to, to make the right patterns for this. And then to go to con con configurator, connect all these um, IT systems together. Uh, that is very important because we don't have an ERP system and we don't know, uh, want to uh, develop one, but uh, we are open to connect to ERP systems so we can read out the fabric information. We know the fabric lengths, the fabric properties and so on, and take, can take them into account to produce some markers. And... Um, that is a big, a great deal to do in the future now uh, for the companies. And as I mentioned already, so startups has it much more easier and say jump in and uh, go ahead. And um, they are much more faster at, uh, at go live as the big companies. And 
Well, as you, as you said, kind of with startups, they're starting with a, a clean sheet of paper, right? And it's what do I want it? What do I want it to be? And they're and they're and they're benefiting from all of the insights from someone like yourself. They've probably experienced uh, perhaps in their in their legacy career or their their initial career different types of uh, production methodologies and things that that they come back and and that's the heart of entrepreneurship, right? Coming back and saying. Um, you know, I think I can do this process a little bit better, right? Or why why don't we think of it this way? So I, I that so the fact that a, that a startup is quick on their feet for something like that, I, I guess I guess that doesn't surprise me. It just it just we we need to we need to champion that that's that kind of thinking. I think back to the the, the legacy businesses, the guys that have longstanding uh, roots roots in the in the in the fashion industry and the textile industry, and then be able to hopefully help them try to figure out ways that they can make those, those, those pivots. And I'm sure on their side, they're, you know, oh, what, what is it going to cost and all those types of things and, and trying to help them underscore all the many benefits you laid out uh, towards, towards the end of your talk uh, on, on, especially, uh, you know, for, for me, um, the, the, um, the measurement part, I think is, is, is fascinating too, as a way of enabling the industry uh, I'm an old uh, Hickey Freeman made to measure <laughs> sale <laughs> sale guy, right? At uh, Brooks Brothers or Barney's before that, um, and even with that, sometimes it's like, oh, they still need they need they still need some work. But the fact that that precision could actually, because you always think about returns, the fact that that precision can help people be satisfied, right? When they either pick it up or it comes to their house and it's delivered, nothing more satisfying than putting on something. That you know fits well, right? Or that that you know what I boy, I, I really this this is this is a transformational piece of clothing for me. Let me let me run out and you know it's my interview suit or it's it's my it's my my uh, my event my event dress, whatever the case may be. I think the fact that you you're building in that kind of precision in, into the measurements only only really and it's something that you probably you know may take for granted, but really can really revolutionize um, the the industry. And you talked about e-commerce, right? The uh, the high rate of returns. Um, what do you what do you what do you think what do you what do you what do you subscribe that to be? Is it is it really just is it people overbuying saying well I can't I can't really try it on or see it so let me let me buy more and then I'll just return it or something else maybe? What do you think, Stefan? Yeah, uh, one of the reason is that uh, people is uh, ordering towards resizes of the same item. Uh, especially in shops which have no um, um, tool which uh, make a recommendation of size. So actually most of the shops have such tools on board to make a recommendation of sizes to eliminate that uh, customer order now two or three times the same item but in different sizes. And uh, second, it is very easy at the moment to order things because normally in the most shops, you have nothing to buy if you send it back. So it is very easy to order because you have no cost to send them back. And I think that is also another point. And uh, once you saw, so you can try. And uh, even with the coronavirus at this time, the e-commerce shopping was going high, very high. And uh, now the, the user are uh, yeah, familiar with uh, ordering online and go ahead with this also. Nevertheless, I think the, the place where to go to shop and to have a, a salesman at the side, which can help you to make the right decision and also feel the haptic of the fabric is another case and will be also in the future here. And uh, that has also a lot of opportunities in this way to go ahead. Yeah, you know, and you think about if you get it right from the start, again, it just you think about that circular nature of what you were talking about. If you get it right from the start, you've got the customer satisfied, you're, you're putting to good use and you're doing it one time, you're designing, you're designing what they want, and then they're going to wear it. It's not just going to sit in the closet, um, get, get gathering dust and and, and being able to take that and, and feel good about it from a technology standpoint, Stephen, and I'm, I'm looking at your, your backdrop pattern on demand. How much, uh, 
uh, from a software standpoint, or again from an imaging, because I know you had those 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 visuals up up as well. Um, how do you see artificial intelligence coming into into some of this, into some of this into this play? Is, is it is it on the design side? Is it is it working through production, touching all areas? What do you think? It will touching every area uh, of the processes, uh, and. Um... I have already have ideas years ago regarding uh, artificial intelligence to go into this process to assist customers, because um, if you know, you can build up uh, items with a lot of variation and at the end, uh, the consumer is uh, not able to make a choice. So you must make it very easy. So that is also the point where companies reduce assortment and uh, give a lead and we have then also ideas to to make suggestions to the customers to the consumers and they can pick up these suggestions and then uh, change some little things and go ahead but at the end the artificial intelligence will come in every process because um, it is needed also in the process of making some markers also here i have ideas to implement such technologies so we can even better make a decision how many pieces have now placed on the fabric and so on. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, listen, Stefan, thank you so much for your contributions and all your good work, all your innovative ideas and your presentation and, and, and talk today. We really, we really enjoyed it here. And thanks for being a, a strong contributor here for our One Sustainability Conference. We wish you all the best in the future. And please, please stay in touch and let us know how we can be helpful to you. Thank you very much. And All right, everybody. also welcome from my side. All right. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take good care, Stefan. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.